Because you're unique. 189 Foot Trek Road, Belleville. The Honest Truth with Benito Vergatini on Smile 90.4 FM. Welcome back to the conversation. We joined in studio Llewellyn Jagels, Cornerstone Institute's Festival of Learning project manager uh, and one of the participants at this year's Festival of Learning, the third Festival of Learning, hosted by the Cornerstone Institute, author Patricia Farron-Fort. Good evening and welcome to The Honest Truth. Good evening to you and Llew- to all the listeners. Llewellyn, hey. Good evening and... Good evening to the listeners. Fantastic, Patricia. Welcome. Llewellyn, if I can, if I can start with you, what is the, the Cornerstone Institute? Cornerstone Institute is an academic institute that has its roots in the Cape Flats um, um, it, since the 1970s. It started off as a, a Bible college, CEBI. Yeah. And since then, it's, through its various incarnations, it's become a, a fully-fledged um, uh, academic institute offering various degree programs both on ca- uh, on campus and online. All right. And now you're hosting, or well, the, the Institute is hosting the Festival of Learning. What essentially is the Festival of Learning? The Festival of Learning is essentially a series of, of, of critical dialogues run across a week that culminates in a, um, um, a celebration, uh, um, uh, um, in this particular incarnation, a, a youth market and a music celebration. Um, and during this course, uh, the course of this week, we we examine various um, dominant discourses around uh, culture, um, uh, storytelling, um, restitution and whiteness, um, issues that are topical and relevant to our society, to our country. And the theme for this particular year's one is healing our world. Mm. So we've 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 created a, a series of dialogues that will actually address these issues. And why is healing so important that it's become the theme? Healing, in the context of our history, the history of our country, if we look at the, the, trauma, the traumas of the past that are still prevalent, um, issues around identity, issues around fallism, um, um, it, it's a, hot, a hotbed and uh, um, a field of interest for Cornerstone in the sense that it wants to address these issues because it means that if we have dialogue around this, and we can address the traumas, we can give voice to the silences, the things that people don't want to talk about, the things that people don't want to say. Yeah. Who are, who, who are going to be involved in these discussions? We've got, it's a combination of, of activists, um, academics, uh, both from Cornerstone and uh, from various other institutions and other interested parties that would like to contribute their voice. For instance, on uh, Monday night, one of our first programs will have a series of um, authors from various backgrounds, uh, academic and non-academic, um, and a poet, and it will be moderated by Dimitri Jagels. Mm, your brother. Yes. Patricia, are you involved with that particular panel? I was uh, co-host, yes. You were co-host. <laughs> so are you telling me you're an unwilling participant in this festival of learning? Those no. are the best kind of participants. Because <laughs> they often have these pills of wisdom that they can share. Absolutely. Why are stories so important, particularly regarding the theme around healing, Patricia? Well, I actually cannot think of a more appropriate remedy as sort of through the arts for... Um, for healing, mm. whether it is dance or song or the written word, I prefer the written word. Yes. And I do a lot of, I can't afford a therapist, so I would write down if I was angry or whatever my day was like, or especially when I was still working, I'm sort of, I've retired from formal employment. And my last job, five years in government, was a miserable experience and for almost the entire five years I would go home every night I created a file and I would put down my feelings for the day by the end of it I printed out 22 pages single spacing of complete anger Wow! and I turned that into comic relief so. And is that where you, where you, where the writing started? No, I've you know, I didn't come from a reading culture, but it happened afterwards. It happened quite late for me, and I always used to make notes in my house. These, if you look through drawers, these pieces of paper where I would make notes and just leave it anywhere, instead of putting it into a file. You know. 
but it did come become useful once I actually published my memoir because I could draw on all those pieces of papers that I had written things on, sometimes very silly things. Um, yeah, so I, I think that if we, there are a lot of untold stories and I think it's necessary to tell for us to actually, in the 80s, with the 70s still, white people were writing our stories. And then we decided it's time for us to do our own stories. And that's how I started getting involved. So I would just record and eventually I was going to discard the project. And I thought, well, maybe I should give it one more try. But I didn't, I needed somebody to just help me through the process and I couldn't think of anyone. Um, the only person that came to mind was Anki Kroch. Because mm. I liked her work and I didn't know her. And I thought it was a bit pretentious to say to somebody, will you please introduce me? So I stalked her on... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should have asked for an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> to, on, on the arts calendar. Right. You know, to see where she'd appear. Yes, yes. And I'm a kind of lone operator. I don't get somebody else into trouble with me. I do it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> so did you eventually meet, well, meet up with Anki Kroos? I found... A, a, um, an event and a gate crashed. <laughs> I wasn't invited. Um, and then she was there. Yes. And I thought, okay, so I just now need to go up to her. And I have my mother sitting on my shoulder and she'll say, there are only two answers, yes or no. Yeah. So I went up to her and I tried to explain to her and she said, well, it was at a function. So she said, phone me tomorrow, which I did. She didn't quite understand and she thought um, she wanted me, then I went to see her and she wanted me to do a master's, you know, and use the, the script as m my um, manuscript as a thesis. And I wasn't keen on that because I thought then it becomes an academic exercise and I wanted it to be raw. Right. And the rest is history. And she was amazing. She's I just feel I owe her so much. Are you still in, in touch with her? Yes, 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 we do. So and it's a good thing that you gate crashed that particular function. Then. Yeah, because <laughs> it was almost as though we knew each other for years. Um, Kindred yeah. spirits. That's right. Patricia, then, then how do stories stimulate greater understanding? Look, I think it, it helps one because if you think about, sometimes we're quite critical of other people. And that's because we don't understand the backgrounds from which we came from. So by telling the stories, it actually puts you in that person in context and you know what is sort of going on. I can turn almost anything. I'm a very nosy person. I eavesdrop all the time. Not for malicious purposes. I just want to know what makes people tick. I look in people's shopping baskets and get chatting to them and in the meantime I would come out with a story. Don't you need that curiosity though as a writer? No, you do. You know, I'll just give you sort of a little example. One day I was in the supermarket and a woman was looking for a bottle opener. Mm. I didn't know where it was so I called somebody else to help us. So the woman comes and she takes us to where the bottle opener was. She gives it to her and she says, Bottle opener, 79 rand, this must a yellow vixer, cost geld. And I'm thinking, we don't always think about, I would go and buy that bottle opener because I need it. But for her, it was, so for me, that's actually another story. So I interact, I see that woman quite often, and I chat to her. What do you hope will be the discussion uh, as part of the Festival of Learning? Your involvement, your... Um, your reluctant involvement in the panel discussion. What do you hope will be will well, be discussed? I must comment on that later. I would hope that people would come away and say, that's actually what I should be doing. And I've wasted a lot of time. Maybe now it's the time to actually do it. So that someone else can also, people think, oh, you're a writer. And I think mm. my book was never going to win a literary prize. I just needed to put the stuff out there. Mm. And... People need to be able to talk 
until what they've experienced. I can understand that stories do provide a platform for for greater understanding. How does one fill that gap for 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 those stories that are so difficult to tell, um, whereby individuals or communities don't have the means to tell that story? How do we get insights and understanding there? I think just by talking to them and telling mm. them. For example, I was on my way to Mozambique to about two or three years ago. I was chatting to a woman, and she's a miner. Um, she works in the mines. And I said to her, are you make, recording these stories? Because one day you can tell your grandchildren. Because people don't believe that women can actually go down, can be working in the mines. So you need to actually... In a way, almost force people to do it, to make them see that there's something here, that I have something to say. Because very often they think, oh, I'm not important. Well, I'm, my best one is, oh, I'm just a secretary. You're just a secretary. You know, it's more than that. Because if you're not there... I it suppose it's recognizing the value of, of your own story and your own journey and knowing, too, that, that it plays a role in it, some way. It, it does play a role. Voice is important as voice well. Is, she mentioned you know, voice, and I think voice. that writing allows us to test the threshold of our humanity. And so that when we give a voice to those that are voiceless, the unremembered, so that as, as writers we, we try and shape that voice for them when they're not, unable to do so. Yeah. Llewellyn, as part of the, the theme around healing with the Festival of Learning happening next week, what becomes of these discussions after, after the festival? Will it be able to translate on the ground in some way with these new ideas that you will be bantering around? Okay, that's the hope, of course. And yeah. um, so to begin with, the, the there's a, um, at the moment, given the context of, of protests at university and so on, for instance, these de-racialized convergences, which then provide the a, a rich, fertile ground for these debates and mm. discourses and discussions so that we record them to begin with. Um, we make them available on YouTube, on Facebook, so that they contribute to the, the ongoing nature of the discussion. It doesn't end. It's an ongoing deliberation yeah. around this. And then out of that, we, of course, hope that people will, will um, acquire the academic skills as well that will allow them to go into c- communities and, 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 for instance, study along the lines of community development, or so, so that they at least in the know in terms of mm. what are the skills that are required to 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 make things happen, other than just having a passion or an interest in it. So, um, so that we hope that it's not just an, ide- uh, an ideological discussion um, that ends when the when the festival of learning ends, but that we continue through further discussions, further dialogues, and um, um, initiatives that allow us to go into the community and actually make a difference. Yeah, because these these rich and and, and certainly productive platforms need to be leveraged upon. Otherwise, it just sure. gets lost. I agree. Yeah, well, I agree. yes, because I think if the good, the stories are not recorded, history is lost or it's lopsided. Yeah. You know, so it, it, stories need to be told. Information about the Festival of Learning, where can we have a look? Yes, it starts on Monday. Um, so on Facebook, we, we have a, a very series of events that are all connected to the generic uh, um, um, Festival of Learning. Yeah. So on Monday, we start with um, uh, effective communication. Uh, Professor Sean Fulyun will be there um, offering that over three days. And then the evening, we will have the various authors discussing the theme of the arts um, as a medium of healing. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, we have uh, various um, psychology offerings, mindfulness and psychology, um, and then skills for dealing with explosive children. Thursday evening, we have restitution and whiteness, and we have various academics uh, from Stellenbosch University, UCT, including academics from um, um, Cornerstone themselves. And then uh, Friday, we have the Institute for um, Healing Memories that will be there doing a workshop. And then we get, move into um, theology, salvation, and the world. How does salvation mm. play itself out in the world? A wide, wide range of topics. Yes, absolutely. Those YouTube channels you spoke about and those various social media platforms, um, to continue those conversations, I'm assuming this is the Cornerstone Institute on Facebook, on the website? Yes, All Facebook, uh, website, um, uh, Pinterest, um, 
all of those are our social media platforms. Mm. We we have everything that that's running there at the moment. Great stuff, guys. We're going to have to leave it there. Unfortunately, time has caught up with us this evening on The Honest Truth. But I thank you so much for yours, uh, giving us a bit more insight into what's going to be happening next week as part of the uh, Festival of Learning. The project manager, uh, Llewellyn Jagels, thank you so much for your time, Llewellyn. Um, One of the panelists at Monday night's uh, author discussion, Patricia Farrenfort, thank you so much for your insights and your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.